On January 18, 1986, late at night, the Orange County Sheriff's Department gets a call that there may be a dead woman in a parking lot at Saddleback College. I'm Kim Markison. I worked for the Orange County Sheriff's Department for 30 years. In January of 1986, I was assigned as a homicide investigator. When I got to the scene in Mission Viejo, it was actually a little bit before 1 AM on Sunday morning. And the parking lot was already cordoned off. It was a large parking area, and it was not close to the buildings. It was very dark. That still impresses me even today, how dark it was there. There was only one car in that parking lot. And once we got closer, I could see that there was a young female laying on the ground nearby that car. My name is Helen Moreno, and for 23 years, I was an investigator in Orange County, California. By the appearance of it, the woman was probably just about to get into her car, but she had not opened the door yet. She was lying on her back, face up, and she had a floral dress. She had heels, and her eyes were wide open, staring into the sky. That's the disturbing thing. It was very apparent that she had been stabbed multiple times. It was a brutal homicide. Just totally unexpected, not something that you would expect to happen at Saddleback College in South Orange County. Not only was she stabbed from the back, but she was stabbed from the front. There was a tremendous amount of blood. The number of stab wounds were way, way, way in the overkill category. Whoever did this, there was a lot of rage and anger there, for sure. Her skirt had been pulled up, exposing her undergarments, but it didn't appear that she had been sexually assaulted. The Orange County Sheriff's investigators begin to search for any physical evidence. But unfortunately, that attempt is a wash. By the time investigators got there, the sprinkler system had gone on. So the area was saturated with water. It's basically like hosing down a crime scene. And I mean, it's just, it's frustrating. My name is Mark Lesteski. I am a forensic technician with the Orange County Coroner's Office. I was working in 1986 when this homicide occurred. I've handled thousands of victims, but some just stick out more than others. And this was one of them. Robin was stabbed so much that there is virtually no blood left in the body at all. There were 41 stab wounds ultimately determined on her body. The knife was serrated blade, five and a half inches or so, six inches. And one of her ribs had almost been severed by the knife, so it was consistent with a knife getting stuck. It was a pretty deep cut. I remember one of the detectives saying that the murderer had really had a hard time trying to pull it out. There was nothing found on her clothing. There was nothing found on her body from a criminalistic standpoint that would help us. There was no appearance of rape. Somebody was out to kill her. While investigators continue to press for leads, Robin's friends and family gather to celebrate and grieve their beloved daughter, sister, and friend in the best way they know how. A week after Robin was murdered, we wondered where were we going to put her ashes. We went, uh, took a boat out of Newport Beach with some of her closest friends. It's just a really beautiful place. And each of us had a part in dumping ashes into the ocean. Yeah, you know, I, the first thing that thought to me was, uh, there goes the last physical remnant of Robin. And it was really painful and difficult to just realize that a week ago, she was just this perfectly normal, happy, loving person who was now reduced to just ashes. The boat ride back to the harbor 
I don't think anybody said a word. And we just sat quietly and just contemplated what we had just done. Once we did that, then that turned into the next phase of really focusing on who did it and why. I had lunch with Janelle, Robin's mom. Gosh, it must have been 1986. I think it was about two weeks before the murder. She told me Robin was brushing her hair and her mom said, what's, what's going on? And she said, I'm, I'm scared. I feel like something bad's gonna happen to me. And Janelle was like, what do you mean? And she said, I'm scared. I feel like something's gonna happen. And so a week after that, Robin had a night class and she didn't come home at the usual time. And Janelle got really worried. And so she said, I literally got in my car, remember no cell phones. I got in my car and I drove the campus because she wasn't home. And when she got back home, Robin was there. And Janelle was so upset. She said, oh my, Robin said, I'm so sorry. I went out for dessert with my friends after. I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about that. So it was this story that Janelle was telling me where Robin definitely felt that something was gonna happen. And then a week later, literally, she was killed. Robin's memorial service, it just confirmed with me that this is your new reality. She is gone. And it was just heartbreaking. But I was very impressed by the size of the group of people that showed up. And at the same time, I wondered if the person who killed Robin was sitting in that crowd. You know, how could you not? I remember being at the back so we could have a view of everybody that was there. The killer oftentimes will attend that memorial service and demonstrate odd behavior during it. We watched and we observed, but we came away empty. There was nothing suspicious from anybody there. Robin's murder. I'm very fearful at this point. This person hasn't been caught and I had phone calls coming into my house at night at like one in the morning all the time for a while. I'd pick up and they would say my name. I mean it went on for like two weeks I think and I have no idea who that was. I was petrified. I didn't spend any time alone after that. I never felt safe just things where I would have walked by myself or during the day I'm talking about. I mean, not forever, but for a long time. And I never park in that parking lot, I, I never will. You know, you can't forget. 